Welcome to the State of Delaware's Microsoft Exchange Online, a part of Microsoft Office 365. In this video, we'll learn about customizing our email messages, organizing and locating our messages, scheduling appointments, and managing tasks. Let's get started. The Microsoft Outlook web application provides you with a number of message settings that enable you to alert recipients to the importance of a message and its sensitivity. In a new, reply, or forwarded message, click the Options button near the top of the message window. In the Message Options dialog box, click the drop-down arrow next to the Importance setting to choose the level of importance you'd like to assign to the message. You can also alert the recipient as to the sensitivity of the message using the Sensitivity option. Please note that this setting will not prevent the recipient from forwarding or printing the message, but it will let them know that it's private or confidential in the information bar of the message. As with many email programs, Outlook Web App also allows you to both send and respond to delivery and read receipts, so senders know if their messages have reached and been read by the recipients. You will receive a notification email when the message is delivered and you will receive another email notification that the email has been read if the recipient elects to do so. If you'd like to adjust additional options for the Outlook web app, such as new email notifications or automatically emptying the deleted items folder when you sign out, click the Options button in the top right corner and choose See All Options. Next, Choose the Settings section in the navigation bar on the left to display the email area. Adjust the settings you need, and then make sure to click the Save button. Outlook Web App's default message format is HTML. Similar to a web page, the message can contain rich content, including images and formatted text. However, some people's email systems may not support the HTML format and therefore be unable to accurately display your messages. To make sure your recipients are able to read your messages, you can change Outlook Web App's message format to plain text by clicking the Message Format drop-down and choosing Plain Text. You can also set Outlook Web App's default message format to plain text or HTML in the Options Settings area. If you're going to be unavailable by email, you may wish to set an automatic reply to let senders know you may not be responding to their emails immediately. In the main web app window, click the Options button in the upper right area of the screen and choose Set Automatic Replies. In the Automatic Replies area, first click the Send Automatic Replies option. If your absence will happen in the future, Set a date and time for the automatic reply feature to turn on and off by clicking the Send Replies Only During This Time Period option and adjusting the date and time. Finally, enter a message that will go out to the people working at the organization and a separate message for those who work outside of the organization. Be sure to click the Save button when you're finished. In the organization, you may find yourself frequently sending emails to the same groups of people. This means you have to type or select multiple usernames and addresses every time you send an email. You can create a contact group to avoid this repetitive task and save time. To create a contact group, first navigate to the Contacts area of the Outlook web app. Next, click the drop-down arrow next to the New button at the top of the Contacts list and choose Group. Now, enter a name for the group in the Group Name field. Next, let's add some group members by clicking the Members button and selecting the people for the group from the Global Address list and our own Contacts list. When we're done, We'll click the OK button to save the group. Now we can save time by addressing an email to the group we created without having to enter a bunch of individual email addresses. 
Before we send the email, let's also add a hyperlink to an important website so the recipients can view the information on that site without having to search for the site on a search engine. In most cases, you can type or paste the link directly into an email and press the Enter key on the keyboard. This will create the link. Otherwise, you can also create a link by adding and using the Insert Hyperlink button on the toolbar. This method allows you to specify the type of link you're creating and its address. Locating messages in the Outlook web application can be quick and easy. While viewing your message list, click in the search field at the top and start typing a word, phrase, name, or email address that appears in the email you're trying to find. Then, press the Enter key on the keyboard to display the search results. To clear the search results, click the red X to the right of the search box and your list will return to normal. If you'd like to change where Search looks for messages, click the drop-down next to the search box and choose a different search location. Or set a specific folder as your default search folder. Sometimes you may want to narrow down the results returned by the search tool. Click the small chevron symbol next to the search box to display the advanced search area. Here, select the options that best meet your needs or experiment a little to see what kinds of results you get back. You may also filter the messages in your list by clicking the Filter button at the top of the message list. Here, you can choose to display only messages that meet your criteria, such as messages that you've been CC'd on, messages that have been flagged for follow-up, or messages from a particular person. To help organize email messages, the Outlook web application includes the Inbox Rules feature that automatically moves, redirects, tags, or deletes messages based on conditions you set. For example, let's say we wanted all messages with a certain word or phrase in the subject line to be moved to another folder. First, we'll click the Options button and choose See All Options. Next, we'll click the Organize Email button in the Navigation pane on the left. In the Inbox Rules section, we'll click the drop-down next to the New button and choose the option Move Messages with Specific Words in the Subject to a Folder. In the New Inbox Rule dialog box, we'll click the Enter Words link, then enter a few words or a phrase and click the plus sign for each one. Finally, we'll click OK to save the criteria. Now we'll click the Select One link to choose a destination folder. And click OK. Finally, we'll save the rule. Messages containing our keywords will now be routed to the destination folder automatically. Automatic routing of junk email is handled by the Junk Email filter. If a message makes it past the junk email filter, you can add its sender to the blocked senders list by right-clicking the suspected junk email and choosing Junk Email, Add Sender to Blocked Senders List. The message will be moved to the junk email folder and future messages from that sender will also be routed to the junk email folder automatically. If you'd like to adjust your junk email settings, click the Options button and choose See All Options. Then, click the Block or Allow item in the Navigation pane on the left. Here in the Junk Email Settings area, you can turn the Junk Email filter on or off. Add senders' email addresses to the Safe Senders list, or add additional email addresses to the Blocked Senders list. Once you save your changes, the filter will monitor your inbox for junk email and remove it. The Outlook Web App Calendar looks very similar to other calendar tools and makes scheduling appointments relatively easy. 
The navigation pane on the left displays and lets us view different years, months, and weeks depending on the current calendar view. To change the calendar view, click on one of the view buttons near the top of the calendar. Or to quickly go to today's date, click the Go to Today button. Once you're familiar with the calendar layout, you may wish to schedule an appointment for yourself. Click the New button to create a new appointment window. Next, enter in the details of your appointment, including the subject and location, the start date and end date, a reminder alarm, and any notes or attachments. When you're finished, click the Save and Close button in the upper left corner of the screen. If you need to change any details about the appointment or meeting, Double-click an appointment, make the changes you need, then click the Save button. If you'd like to meet with others, you can create a meeting request. First, in the calendar's main window, click the drop-down area next to the New button and choose Meeting Request. In the New Meeting Request window, enter in the email addresses or usernames of the people you'd like to invite, or use the address book by clicking the To, Optional, or Resources buttons. If conference rooms are displayed in the address book, make sure to enter them in the Rooms or Resources fields. Now enter the remaining details for the meeting. You may wish to also use the Attachment button to add the meeting agenda. This way, everyone gets a copy of it, and you don't have to send an extra email. Once your meeting details are entered, make sure to click the Send button to send out the invitations. When someone invites you to a meeting, you will receive a meeting request email in your inbox. When you open the email, you'll see options to accept, decline, mark as tentative, or even suggest a new time for the meeting. This way, the meeting organizer can track who will be attending the meeting and who may not be able to attend. When someone you've invited responds to a meeting request, you will receive an email response. Once you've opened the response, your calendar will automatically update with the attendee status in the meeting item on your calendar. By opening the meeting and selecting the Tracking tab, you can review the responses from the people you've invited. If you make any changes to the meeting, such as the dates and times, the reminder, or any attachments, be sure to click the Send Update button in the upper left corner to let the other attendees know about the change. On occasion, you may need to print the calendar. In the Outlook web application, on the Calendar view, click the Printer button in the Calendar toolbar. This opens a window where you can choose the range of the calendar you'd like to print. Select the desired print range, and then click the Print button near the bottom right of the window. When the Print dialog box opens, choose your desired printer, and then click the Print button. The Task feature of Outlook Web App lets you create and manage your list of tasks and to-do items. Mail and contact items that are flagged for follow-up also appear in the Tasks area, so you don't have to search around for them. If you'd like to create a quick task, click in the Type a New Task field at the top of the task list. Select a Due Date and click the Add New Task button. If you'd like a more detailed task, click the New button to open a new task window. Then, enter details such as the status of the task, its priority, or a reminder. Finally, click the Save and Close button. As you track the task, 
you can go back into it to edit and update information about the task. Double-click the task you'd like to update to open it in a task window. Next, change the information you'd like to update, such as the percent complete, the work hours performed on the task, and its completion date. Be sure to click the Save and Close button when you're done. In this video, we learned about customizing our email messages with message options, organizing and locating our messages using the Instant Search tool and Junk Mail features, scheduling appointments and meetings, and creating and managing tasks. Thank you for taking time to view this video.